Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. So here we are. Um, people should be joining the session as we speak. Can't wait to see everyone. And uh, I'm just going to give everyone a little bit of time to come in, to join the session, to get yourselves comfortable. This session has had 465 registrants, so no pressure. I know not everyone will be appearing live, but um, thank you ever so much for those people that are coming along live. And for those people who will be watching the recording on catch up, I've been told the recording will be available in about uh, an hour's time or so, and um, it will be available for the next three months um, for you to watch at your leisure. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining me. I'm going to wait a little bit of time uh, before we start officially. So uh, if you want to use the chat to let me know where you are, uh, in the world. I'm presuming we're going to have some people from um, everywhere, from, from Australia, from the States, probably mostly from the UK, but it'd be lovely to to hear where you're from. Hi, Chris. Nice to see you from Barcelona. Michael from Surrey. Uh, Maria from Surrey as well. Lovely. So do, do um, put in the chat where you're from. Um, let me know if you are a, a secondary school language teacher or a primary language teacher, or maybe you're working in tertiary education, uh, or maybe you're a, a trainer or consultant or what have you. It'd be lovely to to know. Just let everyone know as well that in the drop down menu in the chat, it says everyone or um, hosts and panelists. So if you choose the everyone option, then everyone will be able to see your your message. Hiya, Barbara. Lovely to see you here. That's fantastic. So I'm just going to officially it's 11 o'clock now UK time, but I'm just going to give people a little bit more time to come in. So feel free to use the chat throughout. And if you want to put a question in, uh, feel free to put that in the Q&A box. Um, as it's just me, there's no one else sort of here moderating. Um, I might not be able to do that many questions today, but there's it's a packed session. So I'll be able to show you lots and lots of different things. So I'll try my best to multitask, um, but I might not I might not be able to. Uh, deal with with lots of questions today we'll see how we get on uh so we do have someone from australia that's fantastic fantastic so um as i suspected most people are from the uk um but we do have people from luxembourg from italy um from munich from uh from all over that's amazing okay so um i think i'll just give it a little bit more time just because i've been told to do so um and we'll just go from there so there we are, Charlie from Chepstow. Charlie from Chepstow, lovely to see you here. That's great. So I think we'll probably make a start now, if that's okay, um, simply because I know I've got a lot to, co to cover. Um, okay, so I'm going to share my screen and you'll be able to see my presentation. There we are. You should be able to see that fine now. Um, could you just let me know in the chat? You can definitely see that. That'd be lovely to, to, to know just so. Yep, all good. Okay. Great. So welcome to my first of three uh, solo presentations. And I'm also going to be helping Helen Myers for the Language Teachers Show and Tell as well uh, a bit later on. So it's going to be a packed uh, Saturday, a super Saturday, I like to call it. And um, it's really uh, lovely to be here. And thank you so much to the Language Show for this opportunity. Thank you so much for Linguoscope as well uh, as the uh, the sponsor for this. Um, without the sponsorship, uh, these uh, events would not be possible. So I really appreciate it. And I really hope that you find the content useful. As we all know, ChatGPT is a very hot topic at the moment. And I'm going to give you a taster of the sorts of things you can uh, do with it to produce uh, lesson resources more quickly and more efficiently. There's so many other things I could do. I've only got 45 minutes, so I'm going to try my best to cover as much as I can within that time limit. If you have um, any thoughts or reflections, uh, I'd love you to put them in the chat. I'll be asking for some audience participation a bit later on. But you're here live with me live. This is very exciting. So for those people that haven't seen me before, um, my background is I was a languages teacher for 13 years. I taught secondary school level for three years and then 10 years at middle school level, working with nine, nine to 13 year olds on the Isle of Wight, which is where I am right now, although you probably wouldn't know that <laughs> uh, because of the fact that I'm using this very cool background um, throughout the uh, presentation. But I'm live in my study on the Isle of Wight as per normal. And um, for the last uh, 13 years or so, I've been an independent languages consultant. I've been all over the world running training and speaking at conferences, um, certainly pre-pandemic. Uh, and then as a result of the pandemic and Brexit, 
Um, I tend to do most of my work online now, although I have been going to places like Dublin a lot recently, working with uh, English teachers across the EU, which has been an absolute pleasure, and um, as well as uh, doing uh, presentations, uh, not only with language departments, but also whole school uh, around the use of AI and ChatGPT. Most of the work I'm doing at the moment is to do with AI and ChatGPT, but more of that later. Okay, my contact details are on the screen. So I'm at Joe Dell on, on Twitter or X, should I say now. And um, my email address, as you can see, is joedell at talk21.com. I'm going to be sharing the whole presentation uh, with you, not only for this one, but the other uh, two that I'm giving today. I'll be sharing the presentation with you. So feel free to share the presentation. If I could ask you not to tweet every single idea around ChatGPT, um, that would be great because obviously this is how I make a living. But um, you're very welcome to be here. And um, I really hope that you find it useful. And let's make a start. So to begin with, let's just talk about what ChatGPT is. Um, ChatGPT is an, is an LLM or large language model. The term large language model has been around for many years since at least the 1960s. I think, it, in fact, I think it was coined in the late 50s. And the way that a large language model works is you have to feed it a huge amount of data or data set, as one says. So essentially, it's like a database. You feed it information, you then ask it a question or a prompt, you put a prompt in, and it then scans its database. Uh, it looks at the patterns within the question that you've asked it, and it, it recognizes uh, the patterns from the content which has been fed into it. And as a result of that, it can then give you back some sort of reply. Sometimes, most of the time, I think, in my experience, it produces a uh, a good outcome, a good result. Sometimes it does make things up or hallucinates, uh, which is the official term. Sometimes it hallucinates and just produces things which are plainly wrong. It, uh, some people have described it as sort of it, it lies like a, a confident five-year-old, <laughs> which is quite amusing. Um, and so you have to be very careful whenever you uh, ask a, a large language model to produce content that you check it critically. And it might as well um, show bias. It might produce content which is stereotypical. Um, you could describe it as racist in some context. For example, if you ask it to describe a, um, a Mexican coming to the US, it may uh, presume that the Mexican is a Mexican immigrant, for example. So it might have these sort of you know racist overtones and it could be sexist as well. It could, um, if I remember an example, someone was saying about, could you, um, ask um, uh, what are, let's say, 10 Greek philosophers. It came up with 10 Greek philosophers. They were all male. So you could describe it as it can be sexist. So it's very, very important to check everything that it produces for accuracy and for bias, etc. But that said, I found that it's been really, really good for uh, creating resources more quickly. And um, in relation to uh, using it, particularly in languages, in today's session, I'm going to show you how you can, for example, get it to create lesson plans, uh, narrow reading activities, um, gapful activities, and so on and so forth. So that's essentially what it's all about. Um, ChatGPT belongs to OpenAI. Officially, you have to be 13 or above to have an account. You have to have a mobile phone uh, in order to receive the code that you get to create the account. If you, if you are 13 or above, uh, up to 18, you need to have parental permission. Uh, and so I'm going to be focusing on how teachers can use ChatGPT as opposed to how students can use it. Uh, I'm not naive enough to think that students won't be using it. Uh, and that's a whole uh, uh, whole other ball game. Um, and I'm going to be focusing on how teachers can use it. If you suspect that a student has used ChatGPT, that's a conversation that you need to have with that student, obviously. And um, language teachers have been dealing with this issue with Google Translate for many years. And I think it's similar, but on a much... Uh, uh, more advanced level, I think. Uh, and I'm not saying it's easy, but we're going to focus on how teachers can deal with um, uh, using AI in order to save time. So let's get into the um, into the, the, the good stuff, the practical stuff. I'm going to be doing this all live. So some things might go wrong, who knows, but uh, let's wait and see. Um, I created this presentation, by the way, using ChatGPT. What I did was I asked ChatGPT to create an outline for me um, in uh, for copying and pasting into Word. I did that. I then made sure that all the headings, uh, the titles were all heading one. So I was using the styles option in Word to make sure all the these uh, titles were heading one and all the bullet points were heading two. 
And then you can then go to file, export, export as PowerPoint. This is in Word Online, by the way. You can't do this. Well, I think you can do it actually in the downloadable version of Word, but it's really super simple in the Word Online version. So you go to file, export, export as PowerPoint. Um, you then get a number of themes you can choose using what's called the PowerPoint Designer, which is also an AI tool. And you choose the theme you like. It then generates the presentation and it gives uh, you images based on the text in uh, each slide. So it's very nice. And that's what I used to create this uh, presentation today. OK, so to start off with, let's get into this and let's look at how we can use ChatGPT to make a lesson plan. So um, if I click on the interface right now, you'll see that I am using the uh, uh, ChatGPT uh, 4. This is 3.5 at the moment, but ChatGPT 4 is the paid for version. And um, everything I'm going to be showing you today is using the free version, but I'm actually using the uh, the paid for version simply because it means I can touch wood, always uh, be able to get access. Whereas if you use the uh, the free version, it will occasionally say that you've reached capacity. You can't then uh, do any more with it um, until you wait until it's ready again, as it were. Um, for those people that are new to um, ChatGPT, on the left hand side here, this is where you've got uh, the the archives of all the chats that you put in. So every time you put in a prompt, it creates a new chat. It names it automatically based on the content that you put into the uh, into the prompt, and it will then put them all here. You can turn that off if you want to. If you go to your settings uh, here and you go to where it says data controls, you can turn off this uh, chat history and training if you want to, which means that uh, your chat is not sent to OpenAI to train their model but it means that your chat is then archived or paused at this point. So I've decided to send my content to um, uh, OpenAI, um, but I'm always careful about not putting in personal information such as names and, and so on and so forth, okay? You'll also see here that I've got this little microphone, which I'm gonna be demonstrating a bit later on. This is using a really cool um, Chrome extension called Voice Control for ChatGPT, which I'd really recommend. Uh, having a look at. It's wonderful in the way that you can use it to input your prompts using your voice. Um, and it just saves a lot of time with the paid version now of uh, ChatGPT uh, with the iOS and the Android app. You've got what's called voice con conversations, which means that you can have a conversation with the AI. And I'm going to be demonstrating a bit later on how you can do this live with voice control for ChatGPT. Um, in the free version of the app as well, you can use the microphone option, but it's not exactly the same as the voice conversations, which is very, very cool. The other um, Chrome extension, which I'm going to be using today is called Canned Replies, which um, allows you to make a list of all the prompts that you want to use in a certain session. You can export each list as a um, uh, what's called a JSON file, JSON, which is essentially a text file. And that allows you to make different lists of different prompts to give you a flavor of what I mean by that. If I click on the uh, the extension here, it looks like this. And if I click on the plus icon here, you can see it says reply title, reply body. So you put the title of the prompt in here, you put the body text in here, and you click add, you click save changes, you can have up to about 12 um, prompts or, or um, entries into one list. And then when you're ready, you click export. You can then rename it to whatever you want to call it. And when you're ready, you can then import um, a list you've already made into canned replies. And it just makes it a lot easier. You don't have to use it, but it's a shortcut for adding in your prompts quickly and easily. So with that in mind, let me show you how it works. If I right click here and I go to where it says canned replies, in order to be able to right click uh, with canned replies, you need to click on the enable permissions um, in the Chrome extension as well. So that's another thing that you need to do. So as you can see, I've got lots of different um, prompts here. And the one I'm going to start off with is this one, create a lesson plan. Okay, so I'm now going to put that into the chat. And as you can see, I've said, create a lesson plan. Uh, let's just go up to the top. Create a lesson plan um, for teaching the perfect tense in French aimed at 12 year olds include learning objectives and differentiated activities. So I haven't said the length of the, the lesson It's decided um let's see if it has decided it normally decides it's a 60 minute lesson so it has yeah there we are it has decided it's a 60 minute lesson um and i've made it very clear who the audience is um they are students learning french who are 12 years old and uh, the topic is around the perfect tense so that's a very sort of vanilla type of prompt that you can put in um and you can see now that it's come up with learning objectives and materials it's decided the length of different sessions uh, or different parts of the lesson, should I say, 
uh, activity one, activity two, and so on and so forth. Okay, if we had longer, I would give us longer time to uh, look at exactly what it's written, but you get the idea. And now I could write a prompt in, or I could use my voice. So if I click, uh, ah, can you see here? It's not allowing me to click at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to refresh the page and I'm going to just wait for that to load again. And then it should give me the option to, to use the microphone. When um, Voice Control for ChatGPT was updated a couple of weeks ago, it suddenly became a little bit more glitchy, which is a bit annoying. But um, if necessary, I can just write it in, of course. But I'm just refreshing the page. And what should happen right now is it should allow me to use the microphone. No, I'm just going to write it in instead. OK, so um, uh, could you make the lesson 45 minutes? Also, oh, it's refreshing the page now. So this is the beauty of doing these things live. So that's all good. Let's just wait here. It should work now. Yeah, it's going to work now. Okay, here we go. So could you make the lesson 45 minutes? And also I have two students in my class who are dyslexic. Could you suggest some strategies to support them with this lesson? Finally, could you suggest 10 different free ed tech tools I can ask my students to use at home to practice the content of this lesson. Thank you. Okay, you don't have to say the please and thank you bit, but I normally do that because you never know who's listening. <laughs> so it's now rewriting the, the lesson plan based on uh, what I've asked it to. So I, I really like this sort of multi-prompt approach in the way you can um, start off with one prompt and then uh, add other prompts in order to get exactly what you want. Sometimes you can go down a rabbit hole and it and it sort of, you know, you, you, it would be quicker for you to do the activity yourself. Um, but in this case, I think it's fine to um, ask uh, for new iterations of the the content that um, it's it's producing. And in general, I find one of the main reasons I use ChatGPT is for sort of brainstorming and getting ideas and that sort of thing. OK, so you can see here um, it's now. Uh, has the lesson as 45 minutes. Uh, it's got the different activities. We've got some suggestions here on supporting dyslexic students, which is what I've asked for, which is great. And it's got some free uh, ed tech tools as well, all of which seem like actual tools. It hasn't made any up, which is good to see. And so there we are. OK, so um, that's the starting point. And again, you might think to yourself, well, I could do that better myself. Fair enough. If you feel you can do better yourself, that's great. But it could be a great time saving tool. And it could be a reminder of things that maybe you did a few years ago that you haven't done recently and think, oh, oh yeah, of course I could do that. Or it could sort of um, uh, suggest uh, an idea that will take you off into a different tangent and then, you know, make your your lesson uh, more um, personable and more um, personalized in the sense that uh, you are creating content which uh, you're getting, you know, excited about or, or it's reminded you of something that you've done previously and so on and so forth. So that's that's a, a, a quick little idea on using ChatGPT to, to create a lesson plan. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go to a new chat. To do that, I click on the new chat icon. This has uh, been updated again recently in the last week or so. So it's looking slightly different from the way it was looking before, but that's okay. So I'm now going to right click again. And this time I'm going to go to the uh, narrow reading activity. This is based, based on the work of Dr. Gianfranco Conti. And what it's going to do right now is it's going to create uh, different uh, texts. As you can see, we've got different texts um, using similar structures. And we've got Marie, Marie, Pierre, and Pierre. So I could, if I wanted to, I could now edit this very easily. So I just click on the edit option there. And instead of the routine of two people each, I'm going to put four people instead and click save and submit. So it's really easy to adapt your prompt that way. So now what it's going to do. It's, it's, as you can see, it's giving me um, four texts with four separate people. It's created uh, five questions and it's created five answers. Now, again, you'd have to check this carefully to make sure that one, there was a, a question about every single text and two, that the question um, was appropriate and gave the right answer because sometimes it doesn't. I'm just being very honest with you about that. OK, uh, you'd have to look at the level of language. You'd have to decide whether you thought that was uh, an appropriate level or maybe uh, was too easy or too difficult and so on and so forth. You'd have to make sure that everything made sense and that you are happy with what it has uh, produced. So, for example, here it says that Lucy wakes up at seven o'clock in the morning, whereas Paul wakes up at six o'clock in the morning. 
Uh, Lucy takes a shower. Um, Paul uh, makes his bed and so on and so forth. So there's slight differences between the four different uh, texts. And then you've got the questions here and so on and so forth. So that's an idea on how you could um, save time in producing this. Of course, you could do it yourself, but it will save you time to get um, ChatGPT to do the heavy lifting. And one one thing that ChatGPT, ChatGPT is very good at is producing different types of text. So that's another idea there. The next idea is um, on the sort of classic pen pal postcard. So this time I'm asking it to write a postcard to a friend using a range of tenses. I found that using vehicles like using a range of tenses is a nice way of upskilling the text because it normally makes it um, more, more advanced that way by using little uh, tricks like that, using a range of tenses. Um, and then I've said in basic French, I could have said at A1 level French. So it does recognize the CEFR levels. Um, as you can see here, it says write about your favorite hobby. How can you do it? So these are the parameters I'm putting in. I've said write about 90 words. So it won't be exactly 90 words, but it'll be around 90 words. That's also helpful in relation to the length of the, of the text that you want it to produce. Otherwise, it might produce something that's way too long. And then add 10 comprehension questions and an answer key. So let's have a look at what it's done now. Has it produced a range of tenses? At the moment, I'm just seeing present tense. I think it's all... Oh, no, there's a conditional. But let's let's say... let's. Um, I oh, see. Can you see the microphone's not working right now? So I'm just going to write it in. I'm not going to refresh the page every time, otherwise it take too too long. Okay. So, um, could could you rewrite the text and include a range of tenses, please? Okay. Let's see what it now does. You could also say, could you make the text more challenging? Um, could you make it easier? And so on and so forth. So now let's see. Okay, so we've got a conditional there. Yeah, it's not, It's in my opinion, that's not as good as it could be. And I'm not going to spend obviously time now doing it again and again and again, because as I said, you can go down a rabbit hole easily. But it's it it has got a range of tenses, but maybe um let, let's put in just to show the point, could you include some perfect tense examples? Please. Let's see what it does now. Okay, so yep, so we've got some perfect tense examples now. Yeah, so that's much better. So just with a bit of tinkering. I've now got a, um, a text which I'm much more happy with. And yeah, so there we are. So that shows how a multi-prompt approach, in my experience anyway, is is the way to go. You won't necessarily be able to write a perfect prompt the first time, but once you've created your um, the outcome you're looking for, um, what you can do is you can say to ChatGPT, could you now write a prompt to produce this outcome that will work in a new chat? Because in, a, in an existing chat, it has a type of memory. It's able to look through and uh, see what uh, everything that's been written. So if you say, for example, summarize that, it knows what the word that refers to. It refers to the previous text, let's say. Whereas if you ask it to produce its own uh, prompt, work in a new chat, it's almost as if you're getting it to speak in its own language. So that's something which I've found has been useful as a technique. So do try that one out as well if you'd like to. Okay, so those are a couple of ideas so far. We're now going to look at the gap fill idea. For this one, I'm just going to use my voice and I'm going to do the following. Here we go. So could you please write a 70 word text at A1 level Spanish, which describes the morning routine of Mickey Mouse? Could you make it very, very funny, please? Okay, so this time I thought we'd have a bit of Spanish instead. And I've said 70 words and I've said, can you make it very funny? As you can see now, normally uh, ChatGPT or AI in general is not very good at comedy. It's normally very sort of um, corny and slapstick. So for those Spanish specialists, you can have a look at that and you can see what you think. Now, I'm going to now um, try and turn this into a gap fill. And I think you'll find that it doesn't do a great job. Let's uh, see how we get on. So. Thank you. Could you now please turn this into a gap fill? Could you please have 10 gaps and 
the gaps, I would like them to be underscores, not numbers. That's underscores, not numbers. And can you also put an answer key underneath all the questions? Thank you. Okay, now I can see in the chat, Susanna is saying, I think the level is high for A1. Absolutely. So you'd have to then go in, go into it and edit it or just ask it to make it simpler. One technique is to say, could you explain this text to me as if I was a seven-year-old or a nine-year-old? And that's a way of making the language simpler. So it won't be perfect every time, but it's a starting point. It's a way of avoiding the blank page, as it were. So I absolutely agree with you on that. Um, that's fine. So can you see, I've asked it to make a gap fill. And even though I made it really clear twice that I wanted underscores, not numbers, it's given me numbers. So it hasn't done a good it hasn't done a good job. So let's try again. Could you please have the gaps as underscores, not numbers? That's underscores, not numbers, like a closed test. Thank you. Now it's put close, not close. But let's see if it's ah, now it's doing what I've asked it to do. OK. So that's good. Uh, is it 10 though? One, two, three, four, five, six. No, it's not 10 gaps. So it hasn't done what I've asked it to do. Let's just try one more thing to show um, how it can struggle with some things. Here we go. So could you now take out all the verbs and replace them with underscores, please, and put an answer key underneath? Thank you. Okay, let's see what it does now. Now, normally, what it does here, let's have a look. Now, yeah, so some of these are just not verbs. Zapatos is shoes, isn't it? It's not a verb. So it hasn't, again, it hasn't done what I've asked it to do, basically. So I think I've made that point now. It can be inconsistent in um, in its production. And so it's very good at predicting words and writing text, but it's not particularly brilliant on occasion on more analytical, exact questions. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Word Wall dot net um and i'm going to now yeah so the point to be making the chat saving time at one point but having to double check is time consuming but you have to have to have to always double check everything it produces so you then have to make that professional judgment on whether you feel um it's it's worth using ai i'm just being very honest and authentic with you about that it's up to you to choose some people find it really useful some people find it annoying um that it uh, it can't do what it wants to do straight away but i think if we go with the flow and we're relaxed about it it can be very very useful okay i'm going to now click on missing word and i'm going to put in my title which is mickey's morning routine and I'm now going to paste in the text that ChatGPT has generated. And now I'm going to manually remove all the verbs. So here we are. Uh, and now here we are. Uh, okay, if I miss one, um, be uh, be gentle. Uh, I think I'm doing okay so far. Uh, There we are. So I've removed all the verbs. I haven't removed the SE uh, here because if you have that more than once, you get an error message. So I've now removed lots of the verbs and I've now turned this into a gap fill, as you can see. And it now looks like that. And I've made a lovely activity. So I think that's much better to make that activity um, creating the text already with ChatGPT and then obviously editing it as need be but uh, not um, asking it to make a gap fill. There's lots of other things it can do very well, but I think for gap filling, for some reason, it doesn't do that very well, okay? So let's uh, let's carry on. So if I go back to uh, here, uh, you can see um, that you could also use a, a tool like Close It. Let me see if I can do this very quickly. Um, I'm going to launch uh, Google Doc by using docs.new. If you don't know docs.new, is a shortcut for producing a Google Doc really, really simply and easily. So with that in mind, I'm now going to paste in the uh, the text. There we are, there it is. And I'm gonna go to um, extensions and add-ons and get add-ons like that. So this works really well in the Google environment, but if you're working in a Microsoft environment, you can always download the results as a, uh, as a Microsoft Word document. So if I now put in the word close it, like this, it should then come up. There we are. It's this one here. I've already installed it, so I'm not going to install it now. 
And all I need to do now is go to extensions and close it. And then I click start like that. Okay. Having done that, I then wait for the pane to appear on the right-hand side. Uh, this is also a tool called Brisk, which um, I'm not going to demonstrate today, but that works very nicely with Google Docs. It's another AI tool. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to double click on the word, on the verb uh, despierta, and I'm going to click on the highlight tool, and I'm going to choose a nice bright yellow. I'm now going to go to here, which is paint format, or in Word, it's the format painter. I don't know where Google came up with the idea for that, but there we are. Um, and so now I'm going to go through and I'm going to uh, double click on some of the verbs. So what um, the paint format option does is it allows you to copy the formatting really easily uh, to other parts of a text like this. So again, I may miss some, but uh, I'm getting most of them, I think. And there we are. So let's imagine I've got all of the verbs. I then click Create Worksheet with Word Bank. And as if by magic, as you can see, all the words have been replaced with um, underscores and the Word Bank has now appeared here. So from there, you could then add some more content to make this into a worksheet. And you could also click the File option. You could go to where it says Download and you can download as a Word document if you wanted to. So in other words, you can use this really easily as a way of um, creating your own gap fill and you're in control, okay? So those are um, a few ideas there around um, creating text. Right, the next ideas we're gonna look at is to do with um, uh, maximizing writing and speaking support and using, for example, ChatGPT to, to give feedback for written work. Uh, thank you for the comments, by the way, in the chat, that's great. Um, now, it goes without saying, if you're going to input student work into ChatGPT, you need to have consent. You need to have consent from the students or from the parents. Um, you need to make sure that they are okay about the fact that you're putting in um, uh, a child's work into uh, ChatGPT. You need to make sure that uh, it's anonymous, um, that there's no personal information in that text, and that they're happy to you uh, that that they're happy for you to use the AI to mark the work. Um, with that said, I'm going to demonstrate how you could use this idea, um, but it goes without saying that you would need to have that consent. Okay, so with that in mind, I'm now going to go to a new chat here, and I'm going to right-click, go to canned replies, and I'm going to go to where it says essay feedback. Oh, so I'll do this one first, actually. Create a rubric and give feedback based on the rubric. So here, what I'm doing is I'm asking ChatGPT to create a rubric uh, around um, uh, the marking of uh, practicing the perfect tense using um, uh, three different uh, texts, which I've asked it to write. So I'm asking it to create a rubric. I just got to the top there, uh, show you the, uh, the the prompt. So create a rubric for marking a 12 to 13 year old's written text about what he or she did last weekend, practicing the perfect and imperfect tenses, okay? Um, and I've asked it to make three texts with deliberate mistakes, and it's then going to use the rubric to mark those uh, texts. OK, so you can see here. It, well, first of all, it's very positive. It says certainly it always says things like that. It's now made a rubric like this, you can see, and it's now written the text here and it's identified different mistakes that it has made using the rubric. So again, this could be a starting point. You could use the rubric that it makes if you click um, uh, regenerate or you ask it to do it again it will probably make a, a completely different rubric. So you need to make sure that you're happy with the rubric that it's produced. Or you could always input your own rubric by saying create a table with these different uh, titles for the headers uh, and these different titles for the uh, the rows. And it will then um, uh, hopefully make a rubric for you. Um, so that's another idea. So as you can see, it's looked at the text here, the text here, and it's, it's talking about uh, the feedback. It's very good normally at putting the... Um, that the feedback in, in context, making sentences in context. Um, and you could arguably, uh, if a student was signed up to ChatGPT and they were inputting uh, their work into it independently and they were asking for feedback, then that could be a great way of being able to uh, promote their autonomy. At the same time, you need to have a good amount of knowledge about um, the sort of answer that ChatGPT can produce because if the student just presumes everything that ChatGPT says is correct, they're going to easily fall down a rabbit hole because um, sometimes, as I've said, it just makes things up. So if they've got a good understanding of the grammar already, um, for example, for let's say year 10, year 11 or for, GC, uh, or for A level, this could be a helpful tool in getting feedback 24-7 
from the um, from the the AI without having to ask the teacher each time. So, um, but again, it goes without saying about the parental permission and, and having an account. So there's an idea around using rubrics. And then the second idea around feedback is if I go here and I go to where it says essay feedback, um, I've taken a text here from um, Claire Seckham's Lightbulb Languages uk. And you can see um, this is around uh, David Beckham. It's written in French. As you can see, it's a few years old now because it says that David Beckham's 37 years old and he's playing for Paris Saint-Germain. But you can see here it's made a text and now it's giving me some feedback around the text, putting um, the feedback, the, 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 the things it doesn't like so much in context and saying what it thinks would be better. So again, this could be useful in saving you time if you have permission to input text like that. So that's just you know a really quick and easy way of using the AI to generate feedback. And again, you've got to check everything that it produces because it might just make things up from time to time. Okay, now I'm going to take this text here like that, right click like that, and I'm going to go to a new chat. And uh, that's interesting. Okay, I'm not going to do what I was going to do because the, the, uh, the extension I thought I was going to use doesn't seem to be here. The little button, which is normally there, is not there. But I will just tell you what this uh, the button is or the extension is um, with with all these things to with ChatGPT because the interface is being updated regularly. It means that some buttons disappear from time to time. So I just let you know it's called Edit GPT and it will turn uh, ChatGPT into a type of Grammarly type tool which allows you to proofread uh, any text which uh, it's produced. So uh, I can't show you that right now because the button which is normally here uh, is not there right now. So that's okay. That's not a problem. So instead, I'm going to uh, do the following. I'm going to suggest how you can use uh, ChatGPT um, as a way that you can have it for conversation practice. Um, I see there's a question in the chat about when I right click into a box, it doesn't give those options. Do I need to download anything extra? Yes, Adrian, you need to install the Chrome extension called Voice Control for ChatGPT to use your voice. And if you want to uh, use that canned replies option, you need to install the canned replies um, extension and then add in the prompts that you want to add to have them at your fingertips as it were okay let's see if I can get this to work now here we go so um, I'm gonna yeah that's all good so I would like to practice my a1 level French please I would like you to play the role of a waiter in a French cafe and I only want you to speak in French and I will only speak in French is that okay OK, can you see with practice, it's given me the American uh, spelling, not with an S. There we are. So now we're all ready. So this is using the voice control for ChatGPT um, extension. I'm now choosing French. You can see the number of different languages which are there. And I'm going to turn on the voice, to the text to voice. Sorry. And now let's see if this works. Bonjour, je voudrais un café et un croissant, s'il vous plaît. OK, so now hopefully it's going to... Bonjour, un café et un croissant, d'accord. Un café noir ou avec du lait? Un café au lait, s'il vous plaît. So I'm asking for a white coffee. Un café au lait, très bien. Et pour le croissant, chaud ou à température ambiante? Euh, Est-ce que je peux avoir un croissant chaud, s'il vous plaît, parce qu'il fait froid aujourd'hui? OK, so I'm asking for a hot croissant. Bien sûr, un croissant chaud pour vous réchauffer. Je vais préparer votre commande tout de suite. Un moment, s'il vous plaît. OK, so it's now made this, um, uh, this uh, conversation for me. But I just want to show you this other way of doing the same thing. And I've called this prompt a uh, ridiculous conversation, which I've got here. Now, it's going to do the same thing. But it's going to give me a silly, a silly answer and a sensible answer. Let's see if it, if it works. Bien sûr, je suis ah. prête. <laughs> So it's 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 um Allez, why? For now, je vous in, écoute. with an English accent, we don't obviously it's French. I'm gonna turn it back to French. Uh, that's quite funny, wasn't it? Here we go. So now I'm gonna do the same thing and it's gonna give me a sensible answer and a ridiculous answer. Here we go. Bonjour, je voudrais un café et un croissant, s'il vous plaît. Bien sûr, un café et un croissant, c'est parfait. Je vous apporte ça tout de suite. Ah Vous voulez un café avec un croissant et un parapluie pour votre tasse, peut-être? 
Pas de parapluie, s'il vous plaît. Merci. Je voudrais un croissant et un café. Ça, ça, ça va être super. So I've been offered an umbrella with my cup. Très bien. Un croissant et un café, c'est noté. Je vous les apporte tout de suite. Un croissant et un café, d'accord. Est-ce que vous aimeriez que je les serve dans une chaussure en lieu et place de l'assiette et de la tasse? Okay, so again, it's giving a, a silly answer. So I'm going to now um, mute the, uh, the audio, and that's giving you a little flavor of how you could use it. So I think that could be a lot of fun, uh, creating silly dialogues um, with a bit of humor, which is going to make the language memorable. Okay, let's carry on. I see it in the chat. I've got questions like, can it do Finnish and things like that? Just Just try it. Just try it with different languages and see what you think. Okay. Okay, let's carry on. So to conclude, um, we've looked at what large language models are. We've uh, we've seen how it does not always do a good job. It does make things up sometimes. Uh, hopefully, I've been able to show you how it can do some things very, very well, uh, creating different types of text, uh, for example, in a range of languages. Um, how it's not so good on things like gap fills, so that when you're being very accurate with your question, sometimes it can fall down. But there are workarounds that I've demonstrated and i would just encourage you to have a go at uh, at trying this out really uh, and with a very sort of you know skeptical view uh, just give it a go and see what you think okay just to finish off with i've got some breaking news today uh, which is um i ran a four-part webinar series back in uh, may and june of this year and i'm going to be running it again in january uh, 2024 every monday um in uh, January. So the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd and 29th. Uh, it's not free, but you can have a look at the different links uh, to find out um, how much it is, etc. And um, I'm running it three times each day on those dates. So one at 10 o'clock in the morning for sort of Australia, um, New Zealand, uh, Asian markets, seven o'clock till 8.30 for the um, UK market, European market, and 21.30 to 11 o'clock for the US market. You can go to anyone you want. If you prefer to come to the 2130 because you've done some marking, you want to come along later, that's absolutely fine. And um, you're more than welcome. So check out the links um, to uh, find out the content uh, and hopefully you'll find it really, really useful and interesting. 220 people so far have done it from around the world. If you can't wait and you'd like some recordings of uh, previous um, webinars that I've done around this, the previous series I ran in June, with Avant Assessment, then you can, um, for $180, you can get everything. That's uh, six hours of recordings, all four presentations, all the prompts, which I'm not sharing with you today, all the prompts from all the different activities that um, I've learned how to do using um, ChatGPT and other AI tools. And uh, again, uh, that would be very useful. And this is completely free now. This is the Language Teaching with AI Facebook group. So if you're interested in um, joining uh, that there's two and a half thousand members at the moment uh, please answer the four questions and um, agree to the group's rules otherwise you'll be rejected after an hour automatically simply because i'm the only one doing the admin and so do answer the questions and agree to the group's rules that's completely free to join and a great place to ask questions around the use of ai um, in languages okay and if you'd like the presentation here it is um, is.gd forward slash languages show chat gpt um, or scan the QR code. I just let that um, appear there for a couple of uh, uh, moments so you can scan that. And if anyone has any questions, um, feel free to uh, put them in the Q&A right now. I can see that Adrienne has said, when I right click into a box, it doesn't give those options. Do I need to download anything extra? Okay, so that's the question I've already answered. You need to install uh, the canned replies extension and you need to enable permissions so you can right click so you can access the different prompts. Um, so just have a have a have a look at that. Obviously, uh, obviously, you can contact me via Twitter or X or Facebook to ask uh, more questions if you want to. Um, I'm not sure if you are able to save the chat. If you click on the three dots to the right at the bottom of the chat, it may give you the options to save the chat. I don't know if you all have admin rights to do that. Uh, don't forget, I'm doing another session uh, shortly on AI and um, project based learning and book creator. So you should find that useful. Um, if you're interested in me coming to your uh, school, either a whole school session or with your department, let me know. Um, I've already got lots of bookings, but I'd love some more. So contact me via the various social media um, ways that you could, uh, if you'd like to. Um, do you? Does anyone have any other any other um, questions at all? I can see that Cecilia is saying, "Where is the link for the Monday session?" So 
Um, if you click on the uh, link that I'm sharing, sharing with you right now, then you will um, get access to the whole presentation and you'll have the links there. They're also live on Eventbrite as well. So if you go to Eventbrite and search for my um, my name, uh, you'll find them. So they're all there. I will also be posting them all over social media, but I thought I would announce it as an exclusive at the Language Show 2024 as well and um, and just go from there. I can see that I'm being asked about the Welsh language. Just try it. Just try whichever language you want, Greek, Welsh, Finish whatever, just try it and see what it, uh, um, see how it copes with that. Obviously, most of the languages that have been input uh, into it, I would imagine, are the more um, uh, well-known languages or, or what have you. Probably the vast majority of the texts are English-based. But just try it and see what see what you think, um, and just go from there. Um, I think that's everything. Okay, it looks like you can't save the chat. It might be that if you just do select all and copy everything that's in the chat live, that could possibly work as well. Um, I don't know. I, obviously, I've got different admin rights um, compared to being a an attendee, but I really hope... Uh, okay, it says it's protected. Okay, so it looks like you don't have access to the, to the chat, but I am giving you my whole presentation. Uh, you know, I'd love to come home with you as well, but um, there we are. Um, but you can always contact me and ask me any things that you'd like. So hopefully everyone's got that presentation. And... Um, I think we're going to stop just about now. So I better stop showing my screen. And um, thank you again. It's been lovely. And I'd love to see everyone um, along a bit later for my second session out of four today. Okay, so do take care, everyone. And thank you so much for your feedback and for your content. That's fantastic. Okay, take care and bye for now. Bye-bye.